Hey guys, John B here with Phone Arena, and this is our first look comparison between the LG G7 ThinQ and the LG V30. Clearly, LG loved the design they delivered with the V30, so we see a slight tweak here with the G7 ThinQ. For the most part, they have a lot of commonalities, like their glass meets metal construction and curved edges, but those curved edges extend to all four sides with the G7 ThinQ's chassis. What's really interesting though is that the G7 ThinQ matches the V30's overall footprint, which is a bit strange because traditionally, the G line had the smaller footprint than the V series. Regardless of that, both phones feel incredibly well built, they share the same IP68 rating, you also have headphone jacks, and they also have rear planted fingerprint sensors. We're a bit sad though that the fingerprint sensor no longer doubles as the power button on the G7 ThinQ because now it's a dedicated button on its own on the right edge. Over on the spec side, the G7 ThinQ packs a 6.1 inch Quad HD Plus full vision display that's 1440 by 3160 pixels, while the V30 has a 6 inch Quad HD Plus OLED full vision display and that's 1440 by 2880 pixels. There's a slight advantage in terms of pixel density with the G7 ThinQ, but honestly, you're not going to notice it a whole lot, especially from a normal distance. They are pretty detailed, they have some nice punchy colors and wide viewing angles but we're told that the G7 ThinQ can achieve a peak brightness output of 1000 nits under direct sunlight. A peculiar new change we see with the G7 ThinQ's display is the notch that's near its earpiece. Yes, it might be a distraction for some people, but luckily at least you could adjust that in the settings menu. Over on the software side, if you use the V30, you'll feel at home with the G7 ThinQ just because with LG's custom Android skin, the look and feel hasn't really changed, although you do gain some additional functionality with the G7 ThinQ in the form of its new artificial intelligence integration, which you'll mostly find in the camera, the voice integration, and home appliances. Being the newer phone and all, the G7 ThinQ leverages the Snapdragon 845 with 4GB RAM, while the V30 is packing the Snapdragon 835 with 4GB RAM. When it comes to the basic stuff, you're not going to notice a whole lot of difference, but you could kind of bet that the G7 ThinQ is going to perform better overall because of the newer chipset, even in gaming, although don't count out the V30 either because it isn't a slouch when it comes to that. The V30 has always been known as a powerhouse when it comes to recording video, but that all changes now here with the G7 ThinQ because it combines everything into one. You have the best of both worlds. It's going to be great for still photography and also video recording. That's because it harnesses the same true manual video controls and cine effects that we saw with the V30. And on top of that, with its dual cameras, you could also capture some sweet looking portrait shots, which you can't do on the V30. The only difference though is with the wide angle cameras on both devices. The V30 has a wider 120 degree one versus the G7 ThinQ's 107 degree field of view, so it is a little bit narrower. Oddly enough, it's the V30 that has the larger 3300 mAh battery cell versus the 3000 mAh one in the G7, but both offer wireless charging, so you at least have that convenience. Even though there is an advantage on the spec side with the V30, we hope that the G7 ThinQ can at least match its performance. What LG is doing here with the G7 ThinQ is a little bit strange because there's no longer a clear cut line separating the G series and the V series. In fact, it took everything we love about the V30, like its video recording capabilities, and added it into the G7 ThinQ and much more. And that is it for this quick first look, guys. If you want to learn more about either a handset, you can check out our website, phonerena.com. This is John V, signing off. Thank <laughs> you.